All right, here we go with chapter five, language development from birth to preschool. Before we start, it's really important to remember that there's a wide variation in typical language development. So um, that makes it a little bit hard to talk about. It makes it hard to research. It makes it hard to assess um, when we're talking about preschool language, um, right? We've got the main areas of form, and content and pragmatics, kids can be ahead head in one area, behind in another, average in a third. Um, kids can be really working on motor skills early on, and then the language is just fine, but it comes a little later. Um, kids can be working on language first, so things come early, but then they kind of take a pause as they're working on motor skills later. So. Um, there's a lot of variation um, for kids and a broad range of what is typical and average. There's some great research out there um, showing that babies, really young babies, are more interested in their parents' language, um, the language they're growing up in, than in other languages. Um, and even at one month, babies are more interested in differences in speech sounds, whether it's b, 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 and p, 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 or other things. And what's kind of cool is how they, how they do that is they give that one month old gets a pacifier, maybe to keep them interested. Maybe they'll put a little bit of sugar water with it. And they'll kind of be sucking on the pacifier, sucking away, and they'll just play ba 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 ba, and then all of a sudden they'll change it to pa 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 pa, and when they change that from the ba to the pa, the babies will either stop sucking and listen for a little while, or they'll suck faster, right? So they know that. Very early on, babies can tell the difference between um, sounds of speech and phonemes in whatever language they're in, right? And that's how they can do um, the studies on language, too, that they're going to be much more interested, much more focused when um, there's a recording of somebody talking in their native language versus when there's somebody talking in a different language. Interactional sequences will start to develop, and these are really important. Um, during it, during that first month of having a baby, it can be, it's really difficult because there's not a lot of feedback going on. You've got a baby that's eating, that's um, pooping, and that's crying, and so these interactional sequences are so important. Right? We'll get first. We'll, We'll get some gazing lots of times during feeding, whether it's breastfeeding or bottle feeding. The baby will lock eyes with the person feeding them. Um, they'll start to make little vocalizations. Um, at first, the vocalizations are just completely reflexive, right? The burps, the little gurgles from the milk, um, crying, right? But around two months um, you start to get some cooing, right? some good vowels, some oohs, some ahs. Um, you also get smiling um, right around maybe that two to three month mark. Right, That's really important. That's a big bonding moment. Um, again, you know, at first you kind of get nothing. You get no feedback. Um, so it's great to begin to get that interaction going um, and then sometime between three and six months you get some consonants start coming in so along with the coos you get the babbling um, just some pretty simple ma 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 ba 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 um, or even just ma and ba but um, again just the more interaction um, it's really a big a big time of bonding for um, parent and child we also need to talk about the importance of parental language input. Um, used to be called motherese, now sometimes parentese, um, and that's just the use of simpler words, shorter sentences, 
variations in pitch, slower rate of speech, um, that's going to create greater fluency and there's going to be more enunciation um, along with the pitch variations, right? So how, how parents and really how adults talk to babies um, is going to really allow them to learn words better, meaning, vocabulary, um, all that's really important. So, you know, kids that get um, parent ease, kids that receive lots of talking and attention from parents, right? These are going to be kids who are going to be less likely to have language disorders later on. These are kids that are going to have a larger vocabulary later on. So all this is really important. As we're going through this, just some overall stages to keep in mind. Um, we've got the perlocutionary, the illocutionary, and the locutionary stage. The perlocutionary stage, birth to eight months, um, this is when we're nonverbal, right? No words yet. Um, starting to have some, well, having unintentional communication, right? Crying, things like that. Adults are going to interpret vocalization, smiling, cooing as intentional, right? Smile, and, and some of that starts to become intentional. Um, the illocutionary stage is up around eight to ten months. Um, again, no words yet, but much more intentional communication um, included with the eye gaze. And the eye gaze will be, you know, looking at the parent, then looking at something else, then looking back at the parent, right, as a way to say, hey, look at this, right? And we'll talk more about that in a little bit. Um, we'll have gestures like pointing towards things. Um, the child's going to start vocalizing in some organized and coordinated manners, having some good babbling. Um, we're going to have proto words, which we'll start talking about in a second, right? So maybe they've got an animal, you know, a stuffed animal that, that they really like, you know, that they'll call Mimi or Dada or something. Um, and that's a proto word, so it's not a real word, but it's kind of a made up word that, um, and the beginning of words that the child is, you know, directly referring to something as. Um, and then finally, here we've got the locutionary stage. Here we're combining gestures and vocalizations to re request and demand. Um, and we also have words, so combining gestures and vocalizations. So, right, if a child wants uh, the bottle that's on the table, they're going to point and they might go, uh, 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 right, to say, hey, I want this. So it's not just one or the other. They're going to do both. Um, and this is where words are going to really start to come. All right, we're going to talk about joint attention. Um, so children in about five or six months are going to start to be able to, you know, really have some joint attention with their parents. So um, if the dog comes in and rolls over and parents and child are petting the dog, right, child's looking at the dog, child's looking at the parent, child's getting parent to look at the dog, they're both looking at the dog together. Um, and this is the great time then for the parents to talk about the dog, right? It becomes very concrete, right? Both of them are focused on the same thing. So um, mom, dad, grandparents, whoever can be talking about, you know, oh, you know, we're petting the dog. Oh, the dog really likes that. You're making the dog really happy. Right, the dog, the dog, the dog, and pretty soon the child goes, oh, this thing that we're touching and I'm pulling its hair, this is called a dog, right? So um, the child then is able to begin to connect these sounds parents are making into, all right, that this thing is called that. And that when parents engage in label objects, it's going to increase vocabulary and language skills for kids. So that if parents are not doing this, it's something that we as speech therapists can get parents to do intentionally um, will really help their kids' language skills. 
All right, so let's talk about three words here. We talked about proto word a little bit, um, but think about that um, suffix proto. So think about prototype, right? The first, the beginning of um, a process, maybe a primitive version of something, um, the original. So a proto declarative is going to be a child gesturing, pointing, and or grunting to share an experience, right? So a train goes past, the child points at it, the child kind of grunts, right, as a way of saying, hey, mom, dad, grandma, look at this. I'm excited about this. You need to look at this too, right? So um, we're trying to share something with somebody. So we've got communication, um, sort of the beginnings of Right, what's going to turn into language and likewise a proto imperative will be the same thing but it's in in order to try to get something so a proto imperative is a child gesturing pointing and grunting to get a cookie right to point to the cookie and say and saying uh 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 right i want that give me that um it's the beginning again the beginnings of language of of asking for something of wanting something um, and then, right, we talked about a proto word, a word like utterance produced consistently by an infant. So, ba ba for bottle, right? They're not, they're probably not trying to say the word bottle. They're actually calling that thing a ba ba, right? And maybe they have another word for something else. They call their their um, stuffed elephant that they always sleep with. They call it Mimi. Right, it's just what it's called. It's not really a word. It's a but it's a proto word. It's the beginning of linking, right, some kind of consistent sound formation with an object. All right, so now we get to reduplicated babbling, um, which is consonant vowel clusters that are of similar length and intonation to adult-like speech. Um, watch this YouTube video you may have seen it already of two twins um, kind of talking to each other using lots of babbling um, so ba -da, ba -da, ba 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 right so now we're getting into much more complicated longer we've got pitch we've got intonation um, really becoming you know it's not words yet but we're really getting there and we're even getting to sentences just a few more models with stages here. This is Stark um, talking about pre-linguistic development and look, really looking at, you know, the development of speech and sounds of speech and stage one, birth to eight weeks. Again, we've got those reflexive cries and vegetative sounds, things like burping, gurgling, things like that. Stage two, eight to 12 weeks. Um, crying starts to change from Right, I'm gonna cry as hard and loud as I can for everything to, it's gonna get a little bit different, right? I'm starting to get hungry, I'm uncomfortable, I'm irritated versus I'm in pain, which might be, you know, that really hard um, cry, but you know, other cries are gonna start be becoming more differentiated. Um, again, that, that vowel like cooing begins, those oohs and ahs, um, laughter begins, um, laughing along with people, um, laughing when things are funny, um, laughing at tickling is all going to start to happen. In stage three, we're at 16 to 30 weeks. So that's like four to seven months. Um, vocal play really is going to start to kick in. So those oohs and ahs are going to go ooh, ah, ah, ah. They're just going to get longer. They're going to play with their intonation a little bit. Consonants are going to come in. So ba 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 da 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 da. Right. So we start to have more and more of this. Um, stage four, 25 to 50 weeks. So around six months to a year. Right. We get longer strings of babbling, really changing intonation with the babbling is going to happen. Um, again, all of this leading up towards and practicing and copying right um, words and conversational speech. Finally, we've got stage five, nine to 18 months. 
babbling is now really complex, merges with jargon. It's hard to know where that sort of reduplicated, complicated babbling, um, where that ends and jargon, you know, begins. But jargon is sounds and intonation similar to adult language. Um, so again, we might have some proto words mixed in. We've got a lot of sounds, babbling, right? At this time, we are going to start to even mix in real words. So I think sometimes people think that when children start to have a word, the babbling stops. But lots of times they've got babbling plus words. Sometimes they'll do a bunch of babbling that has a word somewhere there in the middle, right? Um, so this is really the transition to true language production. All right, so now we get into is a vowel, is a vocal production really a word? Um, this comes from Owens 2011. The utterance must have a phonetic relationship to an adult word, right? So um, if the child calls their juice Mimi, and every time they want juice, they're going to call it Mimi, right? Well, that's a proto word, right? They're saying the same thing all the time for something, but it has no phonetic relationship to the adult word for juice. So, right, that's not going to count. On, on the contrary, right, if I'm saying, if a child says baba for their bottle, right, well, that's a proto word, but then it also, right, if they do it consistently and they're only talking about their bottle, then we're going to say yes, right? That, that actually does reach the level of, you know, a real word of ba, ba, bottle, right? We're trying to get there. So it's got to have those three things to be a real world word. It's got to be, um, have some kind of phonetic relationship to the adult word. It's got to have, um, the child has to use it consistently for that thing and not for other things. And the word must occur in the presence of that thing um, and, and not just, you know, with no reference whatsoever.